Okay, so here we go. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. I just did this video and I realized I forgot to <laughs> explain one key part of what I got going on here. So I have this, this is a 461 and it's kind of an odd deal the way this, this cylinder is set up, but I have the windows, I have some HVAC tape on it. The reason I'm doing that is just because I want this to be the most simple explanation of, of how this system works. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. I'm not the technical guy. I'm not the guy that's going to give you all this terminology and try to make myself sound smart because we know that ain't happening. But uh, we're not going to worry about the piston windows, okay? This is not the correct carb for a 461, uh, but you got to give me a little bit of credit for the color coding and uh, all that. So anyway, let's get into it. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. We are going to make this as simple as we can. We're going to talk about what happens on the upstroke when the piston travels up. Downstroke, piston travels down. Super simple. On the upstroke, two things are happening simultaneously. It is your intake and compression are happening on the upstroke. On the downstroke, power and exhaust. People it used to be called ignition and exhaust. It doesn't matter. You can think of it either way, but... So the piston, starting at bottom dead center, travels up, intake. When this bottom of this piston skirt clears the floor of the intake port, it is going to draw in your fuel air mixture from your car, down your uh, intake manifold, through your intake port, and under a vacuum pressure, and at the same time, your charge that is up here in your top end is being compressed once this the top of this piston clears this exhaust roof technically this the top ring it is compressing anything that's up here because it has nowhere to go it's sealed off it's compressing compressing pressing your spark plug actually fires before top dead center but and you're gonna have your spark plug fire explosion drives the piston down so now we're on the downstroke power is driving or piston down and exhaust once your the top of your piston clears your roof exhaust gases are going to go out now on the downstroke uh, another thing that's happening is when the piston is traveling down it is forcing this fuel air mixture that was drawn in through your intake through your transfer ports and i this is all yellow because you could think of this as one one unit here uh, this is your lower transfers, upper transfers. And once your intake is sealed off, you're not taking in any fuel air mixture through your intake port anymore. And it is going to force your charge up through your transfers. You know, at the same time your exhaust is exiting. This is going to fill your upper, your top end and help, you know, push the exhaust out. But uh, you're basically, you have five things going on. And on your downstroke, you could add that you are pushing your charge through your through your transfers now reed valve uh, engines and that that kind of stuff it, it, that's different the piston windows come into play but i'm doing this as the most basic rundown simplified version from a simple guy and one thing that there there are some there's some confusion with uh People, you know, will say that this this is compressing on the, when the piston is traveling down. You're compressing this charge down here. I don't like to say that because even though it is, it's slightly compressing it. It is not the compression that's happening up here. Uh, if you think about it, when this travels down, even though when it closes off your intake, if you had the you know, in some of these saws, you're getting 200 PSI in this, in this top end. If you had 200 PSI down, your seals would fly across the county. Uh, that ain't happening. Um, we test when we check for air leaks, we're only doing seven PSI, but it is creating a positive pressure. And that is what drives your fuel pump diaphragm and your carbs. So on the upstroke, it's drawing your charge. Think of it as like a a syringe and it's creating a vacuum and then on your your downstroke it's creating positive pressure so then you're getting 
vacuum, positive pressure, vacuum, positive pressure. And that's what runs the fuel pump diaphragm in your carb. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that in this video either. So again, intake port, exhaust port, lower transfers, upper transfers. You can think of this as one unit. Upstroke clears the floor, draws in your intake charge at the same time. It is compressing what's in your top end. Sparkler fires, piston goes down, starting to closes off your intake, starting to push this charge up. Your exhaust cracks open, starts to exhaust, and your blowdown is literally the relationship from when your exhaust starts to open to when your uppers start to open. And we'll use easy to understand numbers. Say your exhaust roof is 100 degrees after top dead center. That's how we measure that. And your uppers would be 125 after top dead center. So 100, 125, because this number is always going to be higher. Yeah, your blowdown is 25. It's, it's that simple. Uh, some people, when they try to explain blowdown, it, it confuses the hell out of people. And it's actually super simple. Um, and your intake timing, we do that either before top dead center or after bottom dead center. To me, it doesn't really make a difference, but it, piston is moving up. As soon as that, that skirt clears the floor, that is your intake timing. And it's usually going to be around 70 to 75 degrees or something like that on a stock saw. Uh, I, on a ported saw, I shoot for somewhere around 80, maybe a little more. Um, and the, the reason for changing port timing, uh, you could think if you're familiar with four strokes, but not two strokes, you could think of these, these port heights as your camshaft lobes. And that's what's opening your intake and exhaust valves. And in a two stroke, we don't have that. We can adjust the, the valve timing by, or when they open by changing these heights. So you always hear lower the intake, raise the exhaust. So why would we do that on a two stroke? So when this clears, we have already explained that that is your, that is your intake opening and it's going to take in fuel all the way until it closes that from from there to there, it's taking in fuel that whole time. And that is called duration. So that is a number of degrees throughout the entire revolution that that is dry, taking in fuel. Now, if we lower that intake, instead of taking in fuel from there to there, say we went down to this black line, which is really drastic, but it you know, illustrates the point better. We'd be taking it from there to there. More time throughout the revolution, uh, more duration, and you're drawing in more fuel. The more time that this is open throughout the cycle, the more fuel you're gonna add, okay? So instead of from there to there, we're getting it from there to there. Same with the exhaust. The exhaust duration is going to be, from, you know, the, from when it's open, so from there to there. Now, if we raise the exhaust, it's going to be open from the black line there, from there to there. More duration, more time that it's open. That's going to increase RPMs. Now, one thing I do want to talk about, this is why I stress that you want to do machining and you don't want to just raise your exhaust port. So compression. If you think about compression as a, a water balloon, right? You fill a water balloon with water. If you squeeze that balloon without tying the, the knot in the end, you squeeze it, your water is just going to go spraying out. Now, as soon as this piston is coming up, as soon as it clears the top of the, the roof of the exhaust, technically this ring, but now everything up here, you've just tied the knot on that balloon. Now you are squeezing that thing and you are compressing it. It has nowhere to go. There's no escape. And when you... Take all that volume and compress it into this small area because this is your, this is going to be your squish band right here. So when you measure your squish band with solder, you know, you're going to stick your solder in there and flatten it, measure that. That's going to give you your squish clearance. This is your combustion chamber, combustion chamber, squish band. So it's very small. You're taking all of this volume from right here 
squeezing it into this little tiny area. That's what's giving you your compression. Now, if you raise your exhaust, but you don't do any machining, instead of taking this amount of charge and compressing it into this area, you're now only taking this amount. So instead of all this, now you're only taking all this. You're, you're drastically decreasing compression. Um, so it's, that's why it's so important. And that's why people spend hours to do, you know, put their cylinder on a boring bar or on their lathe with a boring bar and machine their squish. You know, I do it different. I do a dome piston. Each way works good. Uh, there's, there's really no wrong answer as long as your saw is performing better when it leaves. Right. And, um, but if I'm promising you, if you just raise this exhaust port and you don't drop your cylinder at all, you're, you're shooting your compression straight down. And even just doing a base gasket delete, because you can see how small of measurements we're dealing with. We're talking like between 20 to 35 thousands usually. And if you do a base gasket delete, what's a base gasket? Like 12, 13 thousand, something like that. Um, then you can get away with a degree or so on your exhaust if you wanted to. Um, but if you are not doing any machining and you do a base gasket delete, I'd probably leave your exhaust. I'd probably concentrate more on the intake. Uh, I'm telling you, this this is really crucial to... If, if you want to build a, a saw that's going to maybe blast through smaller stuff, uh, firewood, and you want to lean machine and all that, more power to you. But you're not going to build a torquey saw without doing some sort of machining, dropping your combustion chamber. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to get into all that in this video, but... Uh, there's a few, you know, I've been asked this and there are videos out there where they're explaining compression as you're building compression in your lower end. You're really, you're really not. So in a two stroke there, it's, it slightly compresses this charge. But like I said, I don't like to label it compression because people get so confused and I'm not here to confuse people. Uh, I'm here to make this as simple as possible. So I hope this helps. Again, we're not going to worry about piston ported. Um, on your upstroke, you are creating a vacuum. On your downstroke, positive pressure, that's running your impulse line. Your, your pressure is running through your impulse line, operating the fuel pump diaphragm and the carb. When the piston's going up, it is drawing in the fuel. And when it's going down, it is squeezing the charge through your uppers. And that's the gist of it. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Um, it's kind of, it's harder to explain simply than you would think because there's a lot going on at once. That's why I love two strokes. They're simple yet elegant yet it's a symphony of suck, squeeze, bang, blow. And it's happening so fast that I mean, you wouldn't even, it's hard to even think about, you know, uh, at 12,000 RPMs, it's 200 times a second. That thing is blasting up and down so that's that's crazy in one second 200 times so that's pretty wild um other than that you know if you if you want more videos like this of me fumbling around trying to explain this shit uh too bad because this really ain't my cup of tea i just want to throw nitrous on this thing and uh make it look cooler with maybe some more colors and uh that's, that's my gig. That's what I do. So catch you on the next one. I probably forgot to explain a bunch of shit, but uh, it is what it is, guys. Stay rowdy.
It may look crude, but this little heater actually gets this thing really Yep, that's what I think.